Well, hello, Maynard. It is time for planning, zoning, rock and rolling. I have town planner Bill Nemser here, and we've got an action-packed episode today for you. Uh, I'd like to also remind everybody that this is the second week of spring, and my ace producer's here. Where's Matthew? You back there? Are we going to have a microphone for you today? Uh, I'm just no. going to holler from the back. Oh, yeah, I'll just holler. Holler from the back, and we've got the Johnny G, the infamous keyboard wizard there. That's right. All right. And so second week of spring, how's it working out for you so far? The weather's kind of wonky, huh? It's okay. Mm-hmm. But today it's gorgeous, huh? I heard it's going to snow uh, maybe this weekend or next week or something, though. Really? That's what I heard. Well, do you know that on Planning Zone and Rock and Rolling, this is, um, our listenership is growing leaps and bounds. And we do have mm-hmm. listeners in Florida, I'm told right now, <laughs> who are actually some of my uh, former colleagues, no doubt, laughing about the snow business. But, uh, but it's true. But today we could be in shorts. Anyway. So, uh, today, um, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to introduce our special guest in a minute, and we've got a lot of what's going on today around town, so we've got to get, uh, better get right to it. Uh, Johnny G, are you keyed up for some songs there? Ready? Of course. Not yet? Okay. Just case. Well, my guest today is no stranger to most of you from Maynard. Uh, for the last 21 years, if you've gone to the Maynard Public Library, uh, you have probably run into Steve Weiner. Um, he has been the director there since... Most of you guys were born anyway, right? Six or six. I don't know. You're not 21 yet. Yeah. No. no. Okay. So, so they don't know a, a library with no Steve Weiner. And um, before that, he was at Somerville, which um, probably has a couple of exciting stories uh, as well, which uh, we will elicit out from it. But uh, Steve, welcome to the show, and thanks for coming on. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks and, very much for inviting me. And uh, so... Usually on planning, zoning, rock and rolling, which we are, by the way, the number one planning and zoning show in the country. I don't know if you're aware of that. Have you heard of it? <laughs> I'm glad to that's, hear that. That's it, right. Um, so uh, one of the things we normally do is we get a bio, but um, for some reason, I didn't get your bio on this. That was probably my producer's fault. Shame on you, Johnny. You're supposed to have a bio. But uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came uh, to end up as director of our library? Okay, well, it's kind of a convoluted story. I was at the Somerville Public Library for about seven years, and if you, some of you may remember back in 92, the town had an override, and one of the things they did was they closed the library for one day, and someone I knew who lived in Lincoln called me and told me this, and um, I told my father that, and coincidentally, I didn't know that until, until I told him the story, but my grandmother had come here and lived here in the early 1900s, and she'd learned English in the Maynard Public Library. She didn't move to the library. She moved to Maynard. She moved to Maynard, right, good, correct. Okay, just she moved from the Soviet Union, actually. Oh, very good. And then um, the job became open in 94, and I applied, and then I started here in January of 95. Wow. And so that was, yeah, that's 21 years of yeah, that, huh? Yeah. And uh, what was your background? And it was always in, in, in libraries? Or well, I'd been in public libraries for about seven years at that point. Okay, good. Very good. Well, one of the neat things I, um, that I've come across uh, in my career in planning is um, I like to have the opportunity to work around cool buildings. And it's, as you know, I mean, in a lot of, a lot of parts of the country, that's not, you don't always get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's, you know, cookie cutter or disposable architecture, which is practical in certain instances and, and, and it has its place, I suppose. But one place you don't have to worry about it is the Maynard Public Library. That building is absolutely, it, it, it's phenomenal. And, and you know, um, one of the big uh, heroes on this show is uh, the great James Howard Consul. I'm sure you have his books in your library. But uh, he's always said, you know, it's, it's nice to build architecture that's worth saving. And if ever there was a building in a small, in a, in a small town, I mean, I can't imagine being without it. It's that library. What... You were involved in the original uh, retrofitting of that library, is that mm-hmm. correct? Oh, yeah. Okay, you might tell us a little bit about that. We had, we had uh, the great Dave Griffin on here a couple of uh, weeks ago to talk about architecture, and, and um, everybody seems to enjoy that. And, and this building, uh, certainly, we'd love to hear. Uh, give us a little background on the building and how uh, you ended up moving in to the building and what sure. some of the challenges and so right. on. Very cool building. Well, the, the building itself is, as originally was an 1864 building, and it was a school building at that time. And if I understand it correctly, it was actually part of Stowe, because Maynard wasn't incorporated until 1871. 
The building was renovated in 19, between 1916 and 1918, and that's when it was renamed the Roosevelt Building. And it was actually named after Theodore Roosevelt, not FDR. Really? And then the, then the school, and, the, and it was a functioning elementary school until 1988, when the state law changed, and it said that, and, and the now schools were required to have lunchrooms. And that school had no lunchroom. Everybody went home for lunch, and that's why it was originally closed. You guys got it so good. Listen to these. Things. You ever go to school without a lunchroom? I can't say I have. No. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Uh, sure. So um, the school, the building sat vacant, and the town considered several options. They considered turning it to a police department several times, but for uh, probably because the funding wasn't there, it didn't happen. One of the one of the nice things about being a public library is you can apply for state funding to help you with the construction. So, um, in a I think it was 1999, the town transferred the Roosevelt School building to the jurisdiction of the Library Board of Trustees to investigate building a new library. And after that, we, um, we applied for an award. And the intent was to save the exterior building if possible. And we found an architect who believed he could do that, and we were fortunate. Was it possible at that point uh, that the building may have actually even been torn down? Oh, yeah. It was, I was considered several times. And some people believe it was a cheaper way to go. Well, yeah, perhaps it would have been, but it, but uh, but but that was re honestly discussed. Huh? Oh yeah, that was that was. I, if I understand it correctly, the other times that it was considered as a police department, it was going to be torn down. That was one of the, the impediments was that there was a lot a lot of people went to school in that building and they have an attachment to it, and we did our best to save it. Wow, well, and and now it's been it's been updated. I mean, I I have had a number of meetings over there, and I use it for library stuff like mm -hmm. you're supposed to do. You guys go to the library, I hope. Yeah. For the right reasons. Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, but um, the uh, the building, I mean, it, it's retrofitted now, so it's got all the modern right, all the modern amenities, and it certainly is uh, a, a pleasure for anybody who likes architecture and that sort of thing mm -hmm. to go in. But um, what were some of the challenges uh, with the retrofits that you remember? In other words, so you found an architect that was, was willing and able mm -hmm. to, to design this, preserving the exterior and mm -hmm. presumably any of the, um, any of the uh, identifying um, features of the building. Mm -hmm. But what, what, when, you, when you retrofit a building like that, because a lot of our listeners have heard the argument that, you know, it's too expensive to save these old buildings. Mm -hmm. There's too much investment. Uh, it's not practical. And that, that's a different argument. But what really did you encounter for uh, challenges? Um, in well, that? first of all, the way, as it's curr currently constructed, it's a brand new, or it's a building that's, all the, the infrastructure is 10 years old and the exterior walls are almost 100 years old. But that's, so it's a, the inside is a brand new building. And one of the problems that we did have that was a really interesting one to solve was that they couldn't get the caterpillars into the building with the arch, the stone arch that's outside the, the doorway on the, on the Glendale Street side. So they had to take the, the arch apart to get the equipment into the building. And okay. to make sure, they, make sure to put it back together, they, they videotaped themselves taking it apart. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah wow. Cool. What a, that's, that's something else. So couldn't even get the modern machinery in there. No, it was too big. The archway was too small. Uh, energy efficiency, how's it worked out so far? Do you know on that? Oh, yeah. It's yeah, it, been it, pretty good? Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great building in terms of that. So, I mean, my position uh, as, as a planner, and, and I have to sort of, um, I look at these in a number of different ways, and of course you have to consider the fiscal aspect of it too, but, but I look at it also as a, almost a, a design element of the community, an urban design mm -hmm. element. And, yeah. and so I, I say, I, I always thought that we well, have to attribute a value to that as mm -hmm. well. So you're preserving a building, I mean, in the same way that, I imagine the Coolidge School discussions have gone, mm -hmm. you know, with the, some of the same way too. But uh, to me, um, I always thought that that's a, such a valuable part of the community from a design standpoint. Now, uh, here on uh, Planning Zoning Rock and Rolling with Town Planner Bill Nemser, and my guest today is Director of Maynard Public Library, Steve Weiner. Um, you do get a, a fair dose of rock and roll uh, trivia and occasionally some planning trivia, but now we're going to go with a little history trivia with my ace producers here. You want to see this? Sure. Talk? Okay. Theodore Roosevelt, right? You yeah. heard that? Not, not Franklin. Theodore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Theodore ran twice for president of the United States. Do you know what the party, political party, he was with on his second run? There's no prize for this, so don't don't start looking over at this, my prize bag, because you're not getting one for this. This is just. 
I'm gonna go with the bull moose party. Yes, there he. Oh, oh, <laughs> Matthew's on him. fire. Too bad. There, see, we should have gone the double or nothing in this one. You could have gotten the bell. Did you know that one? I didn't. I knew he had the uh, big stick policy though. He, he did. Oh, you got a good walk soft thing. Carry a big stick. That's right. Okay. Well, we're gonna come back uh, so for some more with uh, director of. Maynard Public Library, Steve Weiner, um, is planning zoning rock and rolling. And I have to tell you out there listening at home, it's not easy to find books or books, songs on books or reading, at least not as easy as you think. But I think we've done a pretty decent job of it today. And let's start with the Beatles. All right. Coming back to you, uh, planning zoning rock and rolling. I'm Bill Nemser. And my guest today is Director of Maynard Public Library, Steve Weiner. And that is from an unknown group, uh, up and coming <laughs> group called the Beatles and um, paperback writer. So... Back to where we were. Uh, Steve, you were telling us a little bit about the, um, the building itself, but now let's move into what services the library offers and, and what can people, I mean, for our listeners at home that for whatever reason ha maybe haven't even visited the library, mm -hmm. every time I'm in the library, I'm amazed at like how much stuff is going on. Like everywhere I turn, there's, okay, obviously you expect books, now you expect videos and you expect books on tape or whatever. But, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on. So uh, everything from services to classes to meetings, what kind of stuff can people do at the Maynard Public Library? And let's go from somebody that hasn't been there before. Okay, well, if you haven't been there before, uh, one of the things, a lot of people are surprised that we actually have DVDs that you can borrow. You can borrow them for one week at a time. And um, if they are overdue, generally they're cheaper than Netflix, so it's, a, it's still a good deal. Uh, we have books, we have magazines, newspapers, um, we have uh, um, online databases like Ancestry.com, um, and not, we have a collection of about 75,000 books, but we're a member of the Miniman Library Network, which is about 42 different cities and towns, and it runs basically from Cambridge to Stowe. So we have access to all of their collections. We actually have access to over... Seven million items. No kidding. So yeah. somebody, if there's an item somebody wanted and they it was located in, say, Cambridge, they could just have it ordered in. Yeah, we as long as it's as long as it's available, we can get it for you. Yeah. And then my my famous, um, I guess my, the thing I always end up doing is I'll rent something or I'll I'll check it out from the library, and sometimes I forget to bring it back or I'm, I'm just at the at the at the last minute, and. It, you can bring it back to any library in the Minuteman system now. I Correct. Know as soon as it's checked in at any library, it goes off your card. So that so that's and right. then it's sent back to the Minuteman Public Library by a truck. But it's not just it's not just media items that people can get at the library now. I mean, I I, I also see that they, there's a lot of there's uh, different meetings. People mm -hmm. have different types of meetings. I mean, I have scheduled meetings right. or uh, things there. But there's it seems like there's there's uh, organizations and clubs also use that. And and do they? Um, do, do people, uh, do clubs actually work out of the library, or is it just... Um, no, a lot of different organizations hold their meetings there, but they don't actually work out of the library. So the, what are the Friends of the Library? What, can you explain the friends that? Is a, the Friends is a group that supports the library in two ways. One, it, they fundraise for the library. That's why we have things like book sales and T-shirts and that kind of thing. And also they provide a, lo a lot of the programming that we do with programming that they do. At, they do it at the library. They're the people who are actually sponsoring the book festival we're having this weekend. So, Wait a minute. Wait, wait here I'm playing Zoning Rock and Rolling. We have to go right down the uh, stay right on a task. We're not supposed to talk about the book festival yet. Now we are. Okay, <laughs> book festival. So so book festival is coming up. This is the fifth annual book festival. Yeah, we, this is the fifth year in a row. It was, it's, this is modeled on the, the, the book festival in Newburyport, actually, but we, we do it a little differently. So why don't, now let's see. We have, two, we have two residents in the room here. Let's see. Have you guys been to the book festival? I think I stopped by one, yeah. One of them one year. Johnny G? Uh, to my knowledge, I can't say. <laughs> to my <that>. knowledge. <laughs> In the last five years. Yeah. All right. That's a good save. It's just, <laughs> all right. So you took the let's, on let's, yeah, let's talk about why these guys should go to this year's book festival. Because I looked at the flyer mm -hmm. you had. And it's not stop. It, uh, yeah, I mean, this is actually the busiest one. We, well, this is give us this, a rundown from this, this year is the tenth year in our new building, so we're kind of doing doing making a little extra effort on things this year. So, this year we have Sarah Pennypacker. She writes ch um, children's books, mostly middle grade novels for kids in elementary school. She, in, her, 
and she's very famous um, for her Clementine series, which is a very popular series. She's actually releasing her new book at the festival. No just, kidding. Just by coincidence, the lucky oh. coincidence for us. She's going to actually be at the library? Oh, yeah, and she's going to be releasing the new book. It's the first time you can buy it. Okay. See? Get you. Gather them. Get on yeah. that. Get on. Yeah. All right. might, or if they have younger siblings, they might be more interested. So, And, and then it, and then we have a book-making workshop about 1130 for residents to learn how to make books from local artist Gail Irwin. Oh, I know Gail. Yeah. 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 And she's going to be doing What do you mean that. make books? They, what you do is you actually not like take, write them. No, you actually yeah. take an old book and you reformat it into a, like a, an object to art or a piece of art. That's what you do. It, ah. It's a it's a, a kind of a it's a fairly popular trend across the country right now. Well, I, I don't get out much, I guess, but uh, well, and I don't do I don't do well, very come well. Come on with Saturday. The, yeah, yeah, I might have to. Yeah, eleven thirty. Right? It's uh, I don't do well with the computers. That's why I do, these guys are so mm-hmm. valuable. And at home, I have my wife can do it, but for me, I'm yeah. kind of. Um, and then there's, um, so that's, that's the, in the morning. What else is it? What are, and then at noon we have a panel discussion from three horror writers, and they're going to discuss what horror is, how to write horror. They also write fantasy, and they write all kinds of genre fiction, so it's going to be a, ge- a general discussion of, um, of just writing in general and horror and fantasy specifically. How did you get uh, people, how do you set up, like, to get these sort of writers in and stuff? I mean, how do you... Well, we come up with a list of candidates, and we... Um, are they local? Or are they national? Or what? Well, th- this year they're all. Well, I believe they're all from Massachusetts this year, but they're not always. But this, okay. we come up with a list of local candidates, and then we contact them and see what their availability is and how much they what their fee is. I see. So I, that's the way it works. Okay, and so the, and and that that will that round out the day, or is that no at uh, one thirty? Let's see, one thirty we have. Doug Most, who used to he used to work for BUR, and he wrote a book about the the um, under the subway systems of New York, and he, so he's talking about subways and trains. And another another writer who actually was formerly cool. a Maynard resident named Joe McKendry has also written a book about trains, and they're going to be speaking at one thirty. I'm such a planning geek. I, I love that kind of stuff. I, yeah, like I, I said, get there uh, by eleven thirty. You can make a book, and you can go to their session too. Yeah, I go, oh, I got <laughs> two for two for one. I, and then we're going to then for our closing program, we're going to present um, as our keynote speaker Anita Diamond. She's the woman who wrote the Red Tent and the Boston Girl. Oh, oh, that's uh, yeah. so. That's yeah. I didn't know she's from Massachusetts. Oh yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know where she lives. But I think she lives in Newton, actually. But oh, wow. I've only communicated through email, so I don't know. Where but, she lives. Oh, fantastic! So yeah. this is this is going to be yeah. We uh, pulled out all the stops this year. Holy mackerel! You sure did. And this is only one of a number of events that you have each year. Oh yeah. yeah. And so one more time, what is the time for the the book fair? It is. It starts. The first program is at ten thirty, and the last program starts at three thirty. So it it goes approximately from ten thirty until about five o'clock. And the date was. Dates this Saturday. This April Saturday. 2nd. Okay, April second. And admission is there admission? It, uh, it's free, of course. It's live. Free. free. Oh yeah. See, there's, you said there's no free lunch, Matthew, and you're wrong, see? Well, there, are prob- there might not be a free Well, it's lunch. not free. It's but paid for by your tax dollars. Right. But, it's, but, but in, it's, in essence, it's free. That, I mean, that's fantastic. Now, that, that, but those aren't the only – that's not the only program you have this year. You have other right. stuff oh, sure. uh, cooking. Like, what, what are some of the other Well, uh, let's see. Well, you actually, on? tonight, we, at, we – in every year during our book festival, we have a show of local artists, and the, act, the reception for that is actually tonight. Um, Open to the public? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, all, almost all programs are open to the public unless for some reason they're closed, and then we we'll let you know. Then we on April 12th, we have Julie Berry is going to be previewing her new book here. And I don't know if you, for those of you that remember her, she was a Maynard resident who moved to Los Angeles, so she has this tradition where she likes to open her new book right here in Maynard. So we're very, we're very lucky and very happy that she wants to do that. Really? Oh, yeah. It's great. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. you? It's good to see. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is a crack informed crew. Yeah. They keep me. And then I'm just trying to I think then, um, on I think April 26th, we have a woman from the Islamic Center in Wayland talking about, just giving a, a general talk about Muslims and about issues around Muslims and Muslim Americans. And, you know, that, that should be a really informative evening. That should be. That's, what, what day is that? I think it's Thursday, April 26th. That, that would be a very interesting kind yeah. of. Uh, it's real important. I mean, this day and age to right. understand, you know, what, what right. everybody and, and 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 like that would be a great program too. And right. and what time is that program? I think that's that's at seven. Most programs start program. at seven, right? Most evening program. Yeah, we, that, most programs. And then on May fourth, we have one of the biggest events of the year. We have 
Jeff Kinney, the wimpy kid guy, is going to be here. It's going to be at the Fowler School. I know that. I, can't, I, I know that book that from oh, yeah. my daughters. I have two daughters, and they have daughters. Uh-huh. And so we call them my daughter's daughters. So right. We don't like certain words we don't use on planning, zoning, rock and rolling. Uh, and, <laughs> but uh, so my daughter's daughters reads those. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. Well, they've they, they, they a lot of company yeah. on those things, yeah. Well, that, that's super. Uh, here, uh, planning, zoning, rock and rolling with Bill Nemser. My special guest today is uh, Steve Weiner, director of Maynard Public Library. Well, and... I noticed last year you had an event, and because uh, uh, besides being a planning geek, I'm also a music geek, um, and you had Danny Lane in town, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I happened to see it, and I was on vacation or something, mm-hmm. doing something silly like that, but um, that was an event that you try to put on every year. You try to have a concert in the we have a summer concert Veterans Memorial yeah. Park every year. Correct. And so, can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be, and and what's going, who we're having this year, and sure. how that, last that, year went? That and... actually came out of a, an, a, an award we got from the state called Connecting Cultures, in which we invited different cultures to to learn about each other, in uh, that re- were representative of the Maynard community. And one of the things they did was they we brought in musicians like um, Portuguese musicians and a klezmer band and that kind of thing, and and that evolved into the concert. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. In okay. Fact, in fact, this year, let's see if I remember, the date of the concert is August 4th, and we're having a former American Idol, American Idol finalist, uh, Sibohan Magnus, is going to be here. What's the name? Sibohan Magnus. Is she, is she's, I think you played, I, I did hear some music of hers that you, I think you sent me. At, uh, did you send did me a, a DVD or, or a I see how bad I am in computers? You sent me a clip of her. Oh, right. Right. Yeah, I think right. I YouTube. Right. Very good. Yeah, but YouTube, right. So. Yeah. And um, so, but apparently a lot of the younger, uh, I mean, younger than me, which there's, you guys are younger than me a little bit, but uh, are familiar with her. But have you heard of her? No, I haven't. She, she was two, terrific. Two, yeah, 2011 finalist, that's what she was. Yeah, really good stuff. And now she has a career of her own, so. Well, I think it's time for a little music break, and, and Steve, you going to stick around a little bit? So we're, okay. Sure. Well, all back right. to. and a Dylan cut called My Back Pages. So, see, we're, we're doing all right with the library theme, huh? Oh. <laughs> so my guest today on Planning, Zoning, Rock and Rolling is uh, di- <laughs> Director of Maynard Public Library, Steve Weiner. He's been good enough to uh, come up and put up with our shenanigans for a while, but we're having a, a good discussion here. Uh, let's get back to the uh, library and um, the events that uh, you have coming. And, and you were talking about in the, in the summer, in a summer concert series. Um, right now, we are uh, in the middle of a... Um, Redesigned for Veterans Memorial Park, as mm-hmm. you're probably aware of, because yep. I've had you've had to book the rooms for us and right. stuff. But but one of the things that um, comes up time and time again at these meetings, and I think it's it's so uh, telling. People want a performance area there that mm-hmm. is um, something pragmatic for a, you know for a park that size, but yet something that can can lend itself to a number of different um, different types of arts and so on. But but clearly people want music Mm -hmm. i mean that's one thing i hear about um uh this town is so fun to work in as a planner and you meet all these people and when you talk about culture arts entertainment and and the things that sort of uh uh, make the 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 social fabric of maynard music keeps coming up i mean i can't tell you how many people i talk to that are musicians or Mm -hmm. you know and like me i i I own a guitar i own a couple guitars actually Mm -hmm. i wouldn't call myself a musician but i clunk away at it and everybody seems to be into music. Do you think that um, that that there's room for additional uh, music events at the park, based on your experience with the library and stuff? Well, we actually ha- sponsor an open mic once a month at the library. It's not well, it's not particularly well attended. At the library or at the yeah, park? No, in the library. So I'm just thinking, if that happens once a month, I think I would imagine that there would be a great need for it. I just think that. It's a matter of scheduling because there's so much music going on in this area, and people are so committed to different the kinds. Of Maynard Community Band is is at the park. I think every Wednesday. Correct. In the, yep. In the summertime. And, yep. and, and matter of fact, they've been they've been uh, working on some of the park redesign where it's trying yeah, to get uh, Michael and uh, and the gang. They've been working with us. Um, it's like cool and the gang, right? But, but um, they um, they've been working with us on on a lot of the. Uh, you know the issues that they've encountered. Electricity, of course, being first and foremost. Mm-hmm. How is it when you set up for a band like a, a, a touring band, like a like a Denny Lane or whoever's coming in? Well, we bring they they bring we bring in a sound a person to do the sound, and then 
you know, it's just a matter of them setting up. And the, there is enough. There's enough output there. We haven't had a problem. Right, right. But it, it's it could be improved though. I think is the general consensus mm -hmm. on it. So I think it's. I think it could be a little bit more accessible. I think that's part of it. I don't know. I don't know about the actual the power generated. I don't know if that's an issue or not. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I, that I don't know. I got I got to take a closer look this this year mm -hmm. at stuff. Do you think? Um, and what about other performing arts? I I, I was uh, curious. You know, if there would be, uh, if the town would really uh, enjoy. If, assuming there was a performance area there, um, things like uh, you know Shakespeare in the Park type thing a couple times a year or, or some performance, uh, I thought there, there might be some people. Yeah, I think like I think it's here. definitely worth a try. I think that you, 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 I think, I think trying it once a year anyway would be a, would be a really good idea. Have you done anything? Has the library done anything with plays and things like that? Right? Uh, we do occasionally. You know, the part of the problem with plays is that. You know, they generally they make they make a fair amount of noise, so it, that that interferes with the people who want to use the library. Oh, I meant right yeah, I meant elsewhere. But yeah, you're absolutely. I can but, imagine. But yeah. some, what we do occasionally do it in the library. I mean, oh. we have there's a, a a group in Littleton that comes here, a ballet troupe, and they come a couple times a year and do and do selections from the from the different seasonal performances, and you know, as a way to promote themselves and. Those are free to the public. We do, and, and occasionally we'll have an adult program. We'll have, like, you know, like like someone will do like Mark Twain tonight, that kind of thing. You know, generally a single person will do it. Uh, our pledge line is ringing right now. See, this is <laughs> this is the, we we have a kind of a reverse NPR thing going, that people pledge to give money if I stop the show. <laughs> See, so it's the other way around. It's a reverse. One. Um, okay. Well, that is terrific, Steve. Um, we're going to move into our next sequence, which you may or may not be familiar with, but our listeners at home certainly are. Um, this is called Think You Know Maynard, and this is a little game we play with all our guests. So okay. I hope you're game, no pun intended. Now, um, the way it works is this. We, the rules, first of all, are a little bit, what would you call them, organic, right? They, 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 yeah. they shift. But, but by and large, I'm going to give, um, you're the guest, so you're going to go first, and you're, there's a list of trivia questions all concerning Maynard or the uh, community. And um, I don't know, our, my two ace producers here, uh, they, they take turns going. Um, and you'll appreciate this, because who, whose turn is it today? It's my turn. Johnny G. Okay, you're up against Johnny G. The, ga uh, the guest always has an opportunity, as do the producers, to win a prize. And that prize happens to be lunch with Andrew Scribner, McLean, ta assistant town administrator. Wow. Uh, you, you pick the venue. His money is absolutely no object, a hollow formality for this guy. And so if you win, this is a, what you get. Now, the problem is these guys keep pulling it out, and it keeps ending in a draw. So maybe today you can break that, that streak and have lunch I'll with Andrew. I'll do my best. On Andrew. Okay. You ready, Johnny G? Of course. Okay. Today is now. Steve's going to go first. If Steve, has, if Steve answers it correctly, he, uh, if you go on. on. If you don't, though, Johnny G has a chance. Okay, he has a chance, and he gets a point for that. And then we'll make it interesting as it goes on. Okay, ready? Maynard Folklore discusses a recording studio once located on the second floor of 63 Maynard, 63 Main Street. This is true. Okay. Aerosmith, Tommy Bolin, Boston, and the Talking Heads were all said to have recorded there. What was the name of the hit studio? I'm going to give you its multiple choice. Okay. We've, we've done away with fill in the blank here because it was just <laughs> nobody got anything. I was like, right. <laughs> was it the Maynard Hit Factory? Was it the Northern Recording Studio? Was it the Assabet River Recording Studio? The Maynard Hit Factory, the Northern Recording Studio, or the Assabet River Recording Studio? The recording studio once located on the second floor of 63 Main Street. Um, I'm going to go with number two, the Northern Recording Studio. Oh, uh oh, You're right out of the gate, Johnny G. I got this. Okay. I can pull it back. Okay, you can pull it back. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow, that was saying. I'm, I'm going to recover from that quick answer. He was right. <laughs> he was really, most of the, there's no, no hesitation with that one. All right. White Pond Road Bridge is built on the site of the first bridge over the Assabet River. And that's right on the Stow Maynard border. Okay. What year was the first bridge built at that site? And I'm going to read that again because I haven't got myself confused with that question. White Pond Road Bridge is built on the site of the first bridge over the Assabet River. 
on the Stow Maynard border. What year was the first bridge built at that site? Was it 1716? Was it 1804? Or was it 1889? 1716, 1804, and 1889. And I saw how you answered my questions last time, so I mixed these up a little bit so you couldn't use one. <laughs> okay. Well, since you're mixing you're, it up, you're I'm going to... You're an outlier. You couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> since you're mixing it up, I'm going to go with the uh, middle-of-the-road answer because it seems like the most likely, and I'll say whatever the middle one was, 1804, the middle one. No? Steve, you, you can you can cement it unless we get a little well, more horse doesn't, this doesn't, one. doesn't he get a chance? No. No. Well, he's next week. He no. got it last week. <laughs> he, he, he made it all the way to the end with a double or nothing, but... Okay, so we've eliminated 1804. So was it 1716 or 1889? The first bridge at that site, Stonemeter border over the Say 1716. River. Getting destroyed. Oh my goodness. Right. Okay, you, you, got one more. You gave me an easy one that time. It's okay. Quite early too. Oh, it is. Now, now here on planning zoning rock and rolling, here we pride ourselves on being fair in these sort of contests. Um, now, since Mr. Scribner McLean is about to have to buy <laughs> lunch here, I'm sure he's more than happy to. Maybe bring some friends, too, if you wish. Um, this next one, we can go a double or nothing. I am, I'm game. For no, you, of course you are. You're down. <laughs> what do you mean you and Steve? No, no, I, I, or do you I, want I, to I, stick for one? No, no I'm, I'm game. Double or nothing. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that means two lunches. You have to work that out with Andrew. But you can bring your friends. True or false? Babe Ruth who used to frequent Maynard in, right. in his uh, Boston Red Sox days. True or false, he owned property in Sudbury. He owned property in Lincoln, I think. I'm going to say false. Ooh. Close, but not... He okay. owned an estate. And, uh -oh. I okay. actually knew that one, too. And, did you? I did know that. How did you know that? Uh, my grandfather, I think one of his relatives... Um, Worked for the like was a housekeeper for mm -hmm. that property or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I did in fact know that. Oh, so oh, see, so if yeah. you, see the luck of the draw, that could yeah. have been you. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, my, uh, my driving instructor we used to drive by the house. And my driving oh, instructor really? always pointed out. Like driving golf balls. <laughs> for uh, oh, auto license. Oh, you do have that now, right? Yes. Well, Along with your voter registration. Yep. Good man. Got it all set. Well, the guy who used to be the town historian, Ralph Sheridan, I guess he actually knew Babe Ruth at some point. Because he used to carry around a photo of himself and Babe. Really? And I thought he told me that they were in some farm in Lincoln when. Maybe, but maybe, but he he he, I, I, I just read this. Um, he was uh, out here quite a bit at, in, in uh -huh. Stowe, but but he actually had a uh, they call it an estate in Sudbury. So sure there you go. Estate, so yeah. Andrew dodges another bullet there. Wow. Well, okay. Doesn't, doesn't he get lunch with Andrew? No. No, no it's a double or nothing. No. Got it. I had nothing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it's time to move to our closing segments here, and we're going to go with what's going on. And what's going on this month is actually a lot. It's the upcoming month for those of you who have been following uh, my website. And I would also remind you all to please, uh, for all of our projects uh, that planning is dealing with, go to on the Maynard homepage, go to planning and zoning, and uh, you'll find a link for programs and projects, I think it's called, and I put everything that we talk about in this show about projects is listed online, and you can always access it. So, with that in mind, are you ready to go over what's going on today, Johnny? Yes. You've got Marvin Gaye, he gets me excited about talking about current events. All right. Yes, all right. So, a lot of you were able to attend the Board of Selectors meeting last um Tuesday night, uh, the the um, team for from Capital Group presented a concept plan for 129 Parker. Now, all of you have uh, been following this long enough to remember that whatever um, ends up as a selected uh, conceptual plan must be voted on by town meeting. So, at this point, the board of selectmen saw the initial presentation. I had a few comments, and I'm sure there will be some adjustments uh, to the plan in the meantime. But they have referred the concept plan for 129 Parker to the Maynard Planning Board, on, and that will be heard on April 26th. And that's April 26th. Now, right away, get your get your blackberries out. If they, do they still use blackberries? No. Okay. 
Well, get get your notebooks out. I, I have a notebook still. Get your notebooks out because this meeting for uh, 129 Parker Planning Board on April 26 is not going to be where it normally is in Town Hall. We are moving it to Maynard High School Auditorium. Um, and that's going to be, uh, I don't know the time, it'll probably be at 6 or 7, but we'll, we'll firm that up. But definitely it's going to be on April 26th. It's going to be at Maynard High School, so mark that down. Uh, all the other planning board meetings will stay at Town Hall, but for that particular meeting we've moved it uh, to Maynard High School. Um, also, anybody who has questions, uh, we're trying to move these, make these uh, meetings very effective. Uh, and one of the ways you can do that is to email me, bnemser at townofwellington.net, bnemser at townofwellington.net. Email me any questions you want the planning board um, to address ahead of time, and then I can submit them, and we can uh, get all your questions answered, hopefully right away. And, um, and it does keep it, um, the, the meeting moving. So if you do that, I'd really appreciate that. So for the last time, April 26, Mayor High School, 129 Parker concept plan will be presented to the planning board. Now, the planning board does not approve it there. What they do is they decide whether or not they're going to recommend approval uh, when it goes to town meeting. And so you'll have the chance to vote on that. Uh, also upcoming, actually, um, it's actually coming before Parker. See, I got out of order. I got clumped in. Um, Veterans Memorial Park is having its third and final workshop on April 21st, uh, and that's a, I think it's a Thursday night, and it's going to be at 7 p.m. at the library. Now, uh, actually, you just heard uh, Steve Weiner uh, just tell us about um, what a nice uh, meeting room it is and, and how nice the facilities are, and I can attest to that, but those of you who haven't come, it's worth coming to talk about the Veterans Memorial Park, but it's also worth coming if you've never been uh, to see the library. It's a great time to see the library as well. Now the purpose of this is not to come up with new designs. Uh, we've had a number of workshops and surveys and so on uh, to uh, get input. Uh, this will be uh, CBA Associates of Cambridge, Massachusetts will be presenting uh, a number of designs based on your input. So it's going to be a really exciting night. Um, I think um, I think we maybe we should broadcast live. Should we do a live broadcast? I'm down for that. We have never done something like that. Could we? Could, could we do that? We could yeah. do that. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Oh, and then we could tape it and read it again and we just put some tunes in later. Maybe have a lot. What if we had a live band there in between? Yeah. It might, be, di might be disruptive at the library, though. <laughs> okay. All right. But anyway, whether we have a live broadcast or not, Veterans Memorial Park uh, at the library with third and final workshop, and that'll be on April 21st. Uh, last but not least, you're going to be hearing a lot more about Complete Streets, and those of you at home, We'll remember I uh, had you all uh, kind of suffer through a 25-minute soliloquy that I presented on Complete Streets a few episodes ago, but a lot of people actually did like it. Um, but um, you're going to be able to hear about it uh, firsthand from uh, the good folks at Metropolitan Area Planning Council uh, on um, May 26th, and that's going to be at Town Hall, and we're going to do a walk from there uh, after we have the presentation to walk uh, over a couple of key areas where we think there could be some um, initial improvements made. Uh, but the purpose of this meeting will be to give the community a sense of uh, what we can look forward to uh, with Complete Streets, how we could apply it to our community, and then from that point forward, hopefully we start uh, community meetings uh, much the same way that we did with Veterans Memorial Park to decide what the community really wants, what they would like to see in certain places, and understand the options that are available. Now, the reasons Complete Streets has been thrust to the forefront is, is twofold right now. First of all, because yours truly is the planner here, and uh, it's been something that um, the community has made clear to me since I've been here, uh, both our leadership and, and the residents, that it's something they'd like to see implemented. So that's one reason. It's a good reason. And the second reason is because there is going to be a number of of, um, grants available from the state uh, that we have to position ourselves um, to apply for. And to do that, part of that is going to be uh, public education outreach and um, a few other odds and ends. But so those are the three events we have going on for what's going on. It's kind of a, uh, I, I would say it's light in number, but it's heavy on substance. And um, I think that is pretty much all I have going on now with the book, uh, Steve, since you're here, can you, what was the day of the book fair again for those? It's this Saturday. This Saturday from 1030 until 5. 
So those of you who, uh, the book fair, uh, if you missed the first part of the show, first of all, shame on you. You should set your alarm and, and tune in at 3 on Thursdays. But uh, second of all, uh, the book fair uh, is really going to be a fantastic, uh, almost an all-day event starting at 1030. So I'd encourage all of you to try to make it out there. And um, at that point, I think it's time for another little uh, music interlude. Uh, you got something queued up for us there? Do we have any more books, reading, library, uh, author even type songs in there? What do you got for us now? Uh, we do have the song I Am a Rock by Simon and Garfunkel. Now, how does that, wait, how does that, how does that, how does that work here? Wait a minute. Before I don't you, know. You tell me. You're the one that uh, chose it. Work with me, Jai G. Work with me. <laughs> Because in there, there's a line that says, I have my books and my poetry to protect me. Okay. <laughs> well, Johnny's going to belt me here. All right. Uh, anyway, a little Simon and Garfunkel before we say goodbye. And, uh, again, I'd like to thank my uh, special guest today, uh, Director of Maynard Public Library, Steve Weiner, and Planning, Zoning, Rock and Rolling with some Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, see, you hear the – now that was a good books and poetry reference in there. What did you yeah, think yeah, of that? Yeah, we had to stretch today, didn't we? A little yeah. bit. Anyway, Simon and Garfunkel. You do that traffic sign. What was – you know, what the, 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 when he's staring at the empty pages, he's trying oh, to... Oh, you're right. Yeah, sure. Steve Winwood. Oh, right. Yeah, that's all right. right. Yeah, all right. All right. So that's that's right. I, well, I did all right. I did okay. Yeah, you did great. It was the best I, I got. I, sh- me. I, I love that song, too. Looking at my empty pages. Yeah. So anyway, I think that brings us to the end of today's Planning, Zoning, Rock and Rolling. I'm town planner Bill Nemster. I'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, next week is um, actually, next week is going to be another one of our it's going to be a brand new episode, but I'm not going to be here to do it. You know why, guys? You have a meeting of some sort? Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. But, but <laughs> that's, that's not what I meant, but yeah, because yeah, I have a meeting of some sort. That's true. <laughs> it's important town business now. You. <laughs> and um, so I have this meeting, but anyway, we're going to do, uh, we've found a way where we can do these taped ahead of time, and then you can also cue this show up whenever you want. Imagine having dinner guests over, and you can say, Hey, I don't need background music, right? I just put on planning, zoning, rock and rolling from last September. It's great. And here talks about the sidewalk widths. And the... But uh, anyway, so uh, next week, planning, zoning, rock and rolling will be here, but you um, won't have me in here. But And then we'll be back in two weeks live again. But I'd like to thank everybody for listening. I'd really like to thank uh, my guest, uh, Steve Weiner, and again, my producers who are always, uh, always ready to go. I don't know what you're going to – what am I going to do when you guys graduate? I don't know. Suffer, I guess. Well, no, I don't do that. Come on. Okay, thanks, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week.